Yeah, we're good to go. Yeah, we're good to go. I'm gonna stop you guys at ten two. Ten two. Refused to go to solo. Ten to what? Ten to eight. Ten to eight. I'll be at yes. home sleeping. <laughs> 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 Let me start officially. We can hit. Thank you so much, um, Mr. Gayton McKenzie, future president of South Africa. Thank you so much for coming through, G. I, I appreciate you. And I think the last time we had a sit down was August 2022 in Cape Town. The sound was not the greatest. The views were pretty dope because people are a huge fan of when you speak. Um, I'm going to put a disclaimer up front because we normally do conversations here. And I think there's a lot of things that are burning on your chest that you want to get off your chest. So for those reasons, I'm going to apologize to my ordinary audience and explain that I'm going to focus more on interview today and just allow you to speak with as little interruption as possible. Um, I hope you don't mind and I hope they don't mind as well. No, I don't mind at all. So if just to keep to kick it off officially, because I'm, I'm hoping we can have more of these sit downs um, up until you become president, because it's probably going to be difficult then. <laughs> you know, we're going to have to schedule and speak to the PA and those things. Uh, firstly, how are you doing? Secondly, the, the hot topic is your sit down with Sizwem Pofu Walsh on Unfiltered and you refusing to speak to mainstream media. But how are you doing? And then you can get on that. Yeah, no, no. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I never get this opportunity. Uh, I'm doing very, very well. I'm, you know, I'm adjusting. I'm back home. I'm back Welcome in, back. Yeah. So Welcome I was back in home. the Karua all the time. The problem with the Karua is that I remember my first day at the Karua. I sat there and I saw in a restaurant called Four Sheep, I saw a sign that says, once you enter the Karua, it goes into your veins, it yeah. goes into your DNA. And, and it never leaves you. And I thought like, yeah, right. That's nonsense. That's nonsense. And I can tell you now that's not nonsense. Eh? I miss yeah. the Karua, I miss the people. Everybody greets everyone. Yeah. It's a different, it's something I've never experienced in my entire life, but I'm doing very well. Thank you. We, we can never you. bring that into Joburg ever or in the big cities. We can never have that small town home feel. Never. You can't imitate that. You see, it needs, it's the originality mm. of the small town. You know, you walk in there and somebody will, i make you an example. Like everybody has a joke for you. Everybody yeah. has a, there was this guy that walked past my office and he always make jokes because every time I knock off, he will walk past there. And it's, I'll meet him like twice a week and the guy would say to me every day, and he, he just if full of energy, like, how are you, Maya? How are you, Maya? And then one day I said to him, man, you're the happiest man I know. Yeah. He says, you haven't even seen me happy. Just wait till you give me money one day. You'll see me. <laughs> <laughs> I had to go and draw some money for him immediately. Jeez, that's dope. Season four for Walsh, uh, unfiltered. Uh, very uncomfortable sit down for us watching uh, an interviewer. And look, Dr. Sizwem Walsh is a gentleman I admire very much. I think he's very intelligent. He's doing amazing work. Um, myself personally and many other people were disappointed in how he conducted his interview with you. Um, how did you think the interview went? Um, and why did you decide, was it because of that that you decided, I don't want to sit with mainstream media anymore? No, no, it wasn't because of that. That was just the final straw for me. Yeah. But, you know, it was, it has been in the pipeline. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you it is Daily Maverick and News 24. Yeah, you've spoken out about it yes. many times. And I'm going to give the reasons to that. But I want to come back to Dr. Siswe. You know, the one thing, before I go to the bad of the interview, I want to go to the good. Okay. The self-good. You know, when I looked at him, I realized after that interview that I really want black people to succeed, young black men to succeed. Yeah. Because I realized in that interview what he's trying to do, and I could have finished him with one sentence, like two cent, two two points, which I didn't raise, mm. that I could have raised there. And I thought, I'm not going to do that. And that, I felt so proud for not doing it. Mm. The one point is I realized he has no idea when I was mayor. Mm. So I could have stopped that interview that moment. I wanted to do it, but I didn't do it. I wanted to say, you came to interview me today. Mm. I am your subject for today. I'm the thing. Uh, when, when did I become the mayor? Yeah. He would not have been able to answer that question because he's proven by bringing out the old report of 2022, uh, of 2021, yeah. uh, ordered the report. That was, re that was really sad for an, an educated guy like him because it now makes us wonder if he does his own research or if it's just given to him. No, exactly. And I wanted to go there and say, no, once in that, on that show, if he couldn't say when I became the mayor, mm. It would not have looked good for, because that's, that's the most basic thing you have to research before 100%. that. And the second thing, when he was going at me for Orania and 
And, and all of that, the other mm. say, I think you, do you know that Cecil John Rhodes was basically one of the biggest colonizers? Yeah. And you uh, proudly went to go, but I didn't want to go there. I didn't want to sure. go to his level. Firstly, I think he was petty. Sure. But I also think he's a good kid. Uh, yeah, he's a, good, he's, a, he's, a, he's a good kid, yeah. I say it respectfully when I say kid. I think it was people like Malem and them mm. that he was trying to impress. Okay. Uh, you know, he's, he was trying to impress my uh, nemesis, my yeah. enemies and stuff like the political enemies. Yeah. And because he, he was not himself, he was out of debt. Mm. He, he, I look at the interview again, I'm like, he never gave me a chance to speak. Yeah. Basically. He's still, in your opinion, this is just a personal opinion. You you believe he still has a soft spot for the EFF? I mean, his father he's a, senior... He's an EFF, not he's a soft spot. He's an EFF that came out in that he only needed to have a beret that day. Mm. He had everything except the beret. So he's still very biased politically. Yeah, you see, and that's what people don't understand. You need to get yourself yeah. out of... If you want to be a journalist, be a journalist. You have yeah. views and let your views be known. Yeah. Uh, and I think that Dr. Sizwe... But I still think, you know, we all have that... All of that days where you're like, ah... I fucked up. <laughs> I think that's one of these. I think he will bounce back. Yeah. I will. I think uh, he will bounce back, and 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 we shouldn't slaughter him. And I was feeling also sorry with how people slaughtered him afterwards. Yes, especially on Twitter, because yeah, Twitter people, is not kind. People crushed him, yeah. and I felt sorry for him. And I just think that next time when you have a guest on there, mm. you know, keep your political views to yourself if you want to push an agenda. Sure. He went there trying to make me look like an imbecile. Yeah. And. Uh, he got opposite result. It's really sad. I'm a, I'm a big fan of your books. I've said this many times before. Um, and in one of your books, you specifically speak about black business. And you talk about how when black business lets you down, you should pull them to the side and criticize them on the side. But when they do well, you must say it out loudly. And yes. one of the mistakes we make is when you get good service from a black business, you normally say it on the side. But when they let you down, then you make a noise out there. And I think you're echo echoing that with, with Dr. Sizwem Pufu while she's saying, look, He's young, he's still going to learn. He had an off day, but I'm not going to bash him about it. And I still kind of believe in him. But we understand he may have political biases. It's sad what people did on Twitter because on Twitter, people go personal. Yes. He spoke about his mom, who's from the UK. Spoke about the fact that his PhD is from Oxford. Uh, and yet he wants to come in and speak ill of Orania, etc. So that was the straw that broke the camel's back. The other issues, Daily, Maverick, News24, and just... The reason why you said, look, I, I think I'm done with mainstream media. These people don't respect me. They don't want to hear me. Yes. I think, you know, people don't know in South Africa. You know, when they write an the article, my one my son uh, uh, once said to me, Dad, why did you lie to me? I said, boy, why did I lie to you about my son, Jesse? He says, Dad, you said you only have one name. And he was young and he just learned how to read. I said, of course I've got one name, like a dog. I even made a joke. <laughs> so I got one name like a dog. He says, no, you got another name I saw, all your articles, like XCON. Jeez. And he didn't know what the meaning of XCON was, but he yeah. saw XCON. And, and now I don't mind that, but you know, when I start to mind is that when I have committed crimes when I was, that is 30 years ago, three mm -hmm. decades ago, I was a kid man. Yeah. And they still call me an XCON even when I was a mayor, the ex-con mayor. Mm. But then you have Oscar Pretorius that is in jail currently. Yeah. And they call him the Paralympian champion. Mm. Now, you know, you, you just ask yourself, you, you don't sometimes want to bring in racism, but you're like, ah, I've got so many white guys that I know are with me in jail. That's even in, in councils. Yeah. That's even in councils yeah. that I see. And they call them on their names, uh, Mr. Tessendus mm. or... But why me? Why must I always be reminded about my past? Mm. People don't know that I'm not even arguably. I am the most successful author in South Africa. Ark? And it's not arguably. And if anybody wants to argue that, I've made the type of money Mashaba we used to make with his books. <laughs> and oh. What's that guy's name? Uh, uh, Prince Mashele. Prince Mashele. That's the type of money <laughs> I made. My books are being turned now into movies. Uh, you know, I remember the late Eusebius came to me and he says, how do you do it? Mm. He came to my office to say, teach me how to do what you're doing. I came to your office to you say, teach me. You came to my me. office. Yeah. Zbu, I was the one that taught Zbu about the ISBN number. He mm. came and said, he wants to bring out his first book. I said, do this. I remember the gentleman that was shot with AKA. Uh, Tips. Tips. Yeah. Tips came and, and, and I helped him. I helped so many people to make the book see the light of day. Mm. You can go to any bookshop in South Africa, you don't get my book. Because once it comes out of print, 
It's gone. It's gone. Like you can go anywhere now. Yeah. It, it's gone because, but the mainstream South Africa don't know about that about me. Mm. They just know I'm an ex-con. Yeah. That's all. And that's the narrative that's been good. But I understand why. Mm. Daily Maverick and News24. News24 is led by an uh, imbecile. <laughs> like <laughs> wow. the, Adrian Basson is a petty young man. He's petty. He's, the role is too big for him. Okay. Because he gets personal. He's been writing nonsense about me. He then asked Charles, one of my best friends, to say, can me and G ever sit down? Mm. And we had a sit down in Cape Town three weeks ago. He says, man, let's sort this thing out. I said, my brother, let's sort it out. Mm. A week and a half didn't pass and he went to write lies about me. I then took them on. We went up until the courts, mm. and the court said he should apologize. And now he's busy with the revenge of the apology. They come in with all sorts of stories, but in the same with Daily Maverick. But the issue with them is the following. I understand where it comes from. You see, uh, uh, Penn, here's the issue. That's this lie that you guys, and I include you in those ones, okay. that you believe when it comes to the Western Cape. Mm. When you go to the Western Cape, it's like coming to Joburg and going to Santon. Mm. And then you go back and say that the streets look nice. Of course. The the town looks nice. Mm. But go to Cape Town. Go to the other side of the mountain. And you will see degradation, the humiliation. Our people, you look at a place like Hanover Park. I'll make you just three examples. Hanover Park. It's got 33,000 people living in backyards. The city calls them backyard dwellers, officially. You know what? A dweller. Mm. But then you go to Constantia, where we live, and there's horses grazing there. Mm. And they say there's no land for the people in Hanover Park, the people in Mitchell's Plain, the people in Guguletu, the people in Kalicha. Mm. You go to Guguletu. Do you know that women use, 80 people use one toilet? Mm. 80. And the woman was telling me that sometimes they want to go in the middle of the night and they find this Nyaupe guy that's addicted to Nyaupe sitting and sleeping in the toilet. Shit. Now, as a woman, that your stomach is working, you got to now get the man out mm. of there. Mm. And those are the type of stuff. You go to Langa, there's rats eating children's toes. It's rat infested. Mm. Kali just stinks. It stinks, you know. It, the place literally stinks and it's no reflection on the residents. It is 100% reflection on the government of the day. But they never show us that. So we hear that it's the best run city. Now, mm. do you know the most insulting thing for me? When you say it's the best run city, but every day 10 people die from our communities. What message are you saying? You are saying that our lives don't matter. Mm. Because no city can be the best city in the world if children are dying there. If uh, and it's, not, it's not only adults and gangsters dying; it is children, children. being caught in the crossfire. Yeah. I'm, I yesterday I went to the memorial service of a child in Westbury. Westbury. Yeah. yeah. So what I'm trying to say to you is that it's a lie. The DA only cares about the rich blacks. And, so you're and saying rich this wives. officially? I said officially. I'm saying everything here officially. They care about, and let me tell you why. You look at where we live. I'm a rich black. Yeah. Where we oh, live. Own it, boy. <laughs> yeah, I'm just being honest. So, yeah. where we live, I can't tell you when last I saw a pothole on the Atlantic seaboard. Hmm. But my auntie in Menenberg, where I cut my hair, I cut my hair in Menenberg. Hmm. Where we cut our hair, I explained to the Kenny Kunenes of the world, when they go to Cape Town, when I cut the hair, I take them to Menenberg mm. and I explain how they should drive. And I said, when you get to the big portal, <laughs> stop right there. <laughs> you, you've arrived. <laughs> it has been for 15 years. I've never changed that explanation. I say, you go left, you go right, go straight. The big portal, stop, stop right there. there. Don't pass that big portal. That portal is older than children in that area. But you woke up in the morning and there's a portal in the Atlantic seaboard. In the afternoon, that portal is gone. Hmm. I can go on and on. Look at the the worst one the DA is doing. This is the worst one. This new employment equity thing that they say black people, uh, colored people and Indian people. Hmm. 
I, 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 I saw that and I've, I've held my, my tongue on speaking on it. Now I want to speak about it. Okay. Like, here's the question that no journalist is asking and that, that makes me furious. Mm. In mainstream media. In mainstream media. Yeah. If they say the ANC in the, is now coming with racism mm. with this Employment Equity Act. Yes. The amendment. The yes. amendment for, yeah. But that was voted for first. It's now a proposal yet. But the mother, the, the, the mother idea, the yeah. main idea, they want it, to, it's coming out in different forms now, but the main idea. Sure. Who voted for that? That's the question we should be asking. It mm. is the DA and the ANC both voted for that bill. When we ask the DA, how could you vote for this? Mm. That will make our people be out of jobs. They said it was a mistake. But they don't say it publicly. They don't say it publicly. I am saying today on the show, mm. the Democratic Alliance, of, together with the African National Congress, voted for that. Now today you can't vote for something. And when it comes back to bite you, mm. you want to blame the PA. We are not the national government. We are not in provincial government. This matter was decided in national government. Mm. We are not there. The Democratic Alliance in the ANC, I struggle to see the difference between the two. Oof. You can't say that. No, I can say it because I'll, I can show you what the ANC is doing to people in in, 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 in Northwest. Mm. The D is doing to people in 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 in. in, in um, uh, the Western Cape. Mm. Let's see how many people in South Africa now mm. will go to the Western Cape and come back and say Cape Town is the best run city yeah. because you have that two kilometer radius place everybody goes to. We're yeah. all crammed in that space. Yeah. In that two kilometer radius. Go outside there, go and see how the people live in Lentegeer, Mitchell's Plain, Elsie's Refier, Valhalla Park, Bonte Yevel, Etlung, uh, Langa, Guguletu, Kalicha. Go and see. Can in, you come in, back? In Yanga, people are in being Yanga. murdered every day. Then you come and tell me. But now the premier, and I want to show you this, the discrepancies here. We, we hear that uh, the mayor here in Joburg does not have matric or, or he only has matric. Mm. But it's the same with the premier in the Western Cape only has matric. Gaten McKenzie only has matric. Mm. Now, what you can't come and criticize this one because he's black, he's only mm. has matric. But you're leaving that one that also has matric. Uh, Twitter deals with them because they go to John. They go straight yes. to John. And, and and But my point I'm trying to make, Penn, is that... It's biased we, media. We have a media here that, you know, uh, there was an airline called Mango. Yeah. It doesn't exist anymore. Mm. Mango was run all those years with a man with only matric. Mm. But during that time, we were told about Saudi Mutsuening. Yes. Only matric. Yes. But those are the type of stuff that they hate me for because I it doesn't make me better for speaking out. Sure. I just don't need the tenders. I just don't need the approval. Yeah. And all I'm saying is that they say Gaten McKenzie is close with the ANC. That's the narrative that they are. Mm. No, my brother, let me tell you. I'm in politics for power. They say they are not, you say, I love power. I love power. That's why I'm in politics. <laughs> politics is a power game. Mm. If you don't want power, go play netball like my daughter. <laughs> if you go play netball like my daughter. Shout out to your if, daughter. I'm sure she's powerful on the netball court. <laughs> <laughs> now, people believe nonsense. Yeah. Politics is played on a power field. Yeah. Now, we are all there because we love power. We all want to be mayor, our party to have the mayoral chain. Mm. We all want that. So why do they want to act like, I said it from the beginning, we work with anybody. Sure. We work with the ANC, we work with the DA, for as long as our people can get jobs, mm. as long as we can change. In opposition benches, you can do nothing. Mm. So for me, when this thing with the ANC, the DA says they're going to vote, they might form a coalition with the ANC. Mm. So what's good for them, why can that not be good for us? Mm. That was actually very weird. And I, I've had these conversations with a lot of people of, of political influence, analysts, that it, it's crazy that, uh, and look, maybe we'll discuss it a bit later, the coalition yeah. aspect, because no one expected the DA to announce what they announced. 
that yes. they literally put their hand up because they kind of know that, look, the ANC might lean to the EFF, but they're like, look, we're also here if you guys go under 50. But we can discuss that with coalition. Um, I want to take this moment to just send uh, condolences and sympathies again. We've we've done it many times, but we've lost Eusebius Makaiza. Um, you mentioned AKA. You men- mentioned uh, Utibs as well. Um, it, it becomes part of the crime conversation, which maybe we can speak about um, later as well. You didn't really get a fair chance to share your thoughts on Orania. And I'd, I'd like you freely and comfortably now to please share your thoughts on Orania, starting with the fact that you were met with um, friendly people. Yes, no, thank you very much for that. You know, I think Orania does not allow, like I know they don't allow black people. That yeah. I know. It's not official. Pardon? It's not official. I think what they do is they they, they lack the courage yeah. to say it. Well, they, it's not courage. It's unconstitutional. They, they're they intelligent about it. Yeah, sure. But what they're doing is they rep that they bypass the constitution by yes. saying you need to speak Afrikaans. 100%. Now, I speak Afrikaans better than most white people. <laughs> That's my first language. Yeah. And... But I cannot live in Orania. Yeah. Then they get another thing they say. You got to uh, believe in our cultures mm. and in our holidays. Now, there's yes. an Afrikaans holiday that a lot of black people are not aware of. It's called Gelofte Dag. Yeah. Now, Gelofte Dag uh, is where they made a promise mm. as Afrikaners. Mm. We call it Dingans Day, I think. Uh, some people call it uh, the Day of Blood River. Okay. Uh, 16 December. Okay. Gelofte Dag. Re- Reconciliation Day. Yes. Okay. All right. Now, all those days, they have certain holidays that we don't... Gelofte Dag is just one example. I'm making yeah. an example. Uh, Gelofte is like where we solemnly promise that we will serve God and, mm. and thank Him for this victory. Mm. Covenant with God. Yes, a covenant yeah. with God. And now, some of those holidays I don't believe in. So that yeah. excludes me. Yeah. So there's no black man that can jump the hurdle into Orania. Mm. So on that front, it's racist. Sure. It's racist. In, in substance, not in name, but yes. in substance. It's racist. Yeah. Now the second part is, when you look at Orania, it is very impressive what they've done there. Mm. They started this town, nobody gave them, oh, the last two points, the first two points I need also to mention is, a government sold them that land. Not by a court order, it was a commercial deal mm. between the South African government and Orania. Okay. For the the ANC led government at the, the time. The ANC led government. Okay. They even went further. They then said, We want our own municipality. You don't need to help us. We want nothing to do with your money. We'll do our own service delivery. We'll do our own service delivery. We want nothing to do with you. The ANC government says, No, 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 no. They went to court. Mm. And these are the things I was trying to explain to Cizwe. They yeah. went to court. At the day of the hearing, the ANC said, let's settle out of court. You can have your own municipality. municipality. Now, it is very difficult to start something like Orania. Mm. But our government helped them every step of the way. Mm. But we cannot be blind to that today. Yeah. Then the good of Orania. I came there. One guy was even taking us and said, here comes, I said, he greets us. So I said, why you, everybody greets everyone. Yeah. They're like, that's just how we are. Where is the facade or whatever? But they greeted us. Sure. I can't come here and say, no, the people were unfriendly while we encountered friendliness that I sorely encounter mm. in South Africa. They call it in, in outside Orania. Let me put sure. it this way. Sure. Then when we went further in Orania, the people in Orania then, <laughs> I found one guy was saying to me, we have no crime here. I even left my laptop in the car. And it's open. I said, let's go. <laughs> I wanted to see. So we walked. <laughs> and I filmed that. We walked there. Yeah. And his laptop was there. Then Orania is now busy. And I think the one thing that we must be very worried about. Mm. And I was hoping I can wake our government up. But they're not waking up with that. Yeah. Orania is hard at work with one of the biggest projects. Sure. Which is to be of the grid and not have load shedding. Yeah. Now, do you understand the humiliation, the embarrassment for us? If you look at South Africa from the sky mm. and it is dark, the side, 
and you know, run us all There's down. a little patch that's lit. Where is that? Like, Where is that? They're like, that's where the white people are. <laughs> that's a problem for me. It, 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 it's an indictment yeah. on us. Now, instead of saying, what is Gaten doing, Orania? They are going all over the world saying they're going to learn. Mm. But our government is not honest. These are holidays for these officials, these ministers. Mm. They go shopping when they say we're going to learn in Europe. Mm. We're going to learn where they're going. On, let me tell you, they're going on a paid state paid holiday. Mm. Because why we've never seen them implementing those things yes. that they have learned? Who have they workshop when they come back and say, well, we're back now, come, let me workshop you. Sure. I'm saying that I, as Gates and Mackenzie, has learned so much from Orania. Mm. And if people got angry with Orania, I still have four trips I'm going to make in the next three months. Mm. So they must prepare themselves for a lot of outrage. <laughs> Trip number one, I'm going to Botswana. Mm. I'm going to learn about the death penalty. Jeez, you're uh, going back to the death penalty. Yes, I'm going to learn. And then from there, I'm going to uh, El Salvador. Mm. I want to see how they went from 30 murders a day to no murder for a whole year. Mm. I want to go learn. Yeah. I'm going to Israel. I want to go learn to say Israel has never not had a coalition. They have been a coalition government from the start of the, mm. from the advent of the state of Israel. And I'm not going there for Palestinian issues and those. I'm going there to learn about yeah. how do you guys do these coalitions? Because we, we're grappling with it mm. and we don't get it right. Mm. Now, that's just the type of person I am. I'm not all-knowing. I go to people and I don't take advice uh, and learnings from people that's never done something. Yeah. Because what we are the same boat. <laughs> <laughs> we don't you, know. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I, so I want to go and learn from them. Yeah. I want to go to Vietnam. I want to go and learn about your electricity problem that you're having. How did mm. you guys sort out this electricity mm. problem? And for me, that's the type of person I am because I want to go and learn from other people. Mm. You might not like those people, sure. but they have lessons that I think I sorely need. Mm. And hence, I'm going to those places. So I'm not going to sit here and say, I'm not going to learn from Orania. Mm. And then tom tomorrow, Orania is sitting on the light, switching on the lights. Yeah. And we are in darkness. Because our ESCOM thing, which I'll speak to you about also, mm. is deliberate. Sure. We are deliberately in darkness. That's That's... Proper leadership. And I think even China and those guys have shown this, this concept of if we find a space or people that have solved the problems that we have, let's go and learn from them and come back and implement. Definitely. You know, having traveled, when you've been in Joburg for a while and been pickpocketed and mugged, you become paranoid. So I started this habit everywhere I travel of touching my pockets just to make sure my phones are still there. <laughs> I visited South Korea a couple of years ago and I still had this weird habit. And I remember being schooled there that sometimes in parts of the city, there isn't enough parking. So people will park each other in. They'll park each other in, but they will leave the keys in the car. Mm. So that when you get there, and you need to get your car out. You first drive the person's car, then you drive yours out, and then you park his car, and then you leave. I was like, that is impossible. I went online and I researched. It's a real thing. Like, the concept of that would blow your mind. The people leave the car with the keys, yes, so that you can move it. So so I, I understand what you mean. And the idea of Orania, I, I think currently they're at 12 hours a day. They can supply half of the day mm. off-grid and they're looking to go 24 hours. Definitely. Which I, I think is is quite impressive. Um, I'm hoping to visit there as well. It's it's really far. So uh, I've been speaking to one of the leaders there, Yes, yeah, exactly. who's trying to organize. Because um, I'd, I'd also like to learn emotions aside. Um, a lot of black people, especially black people that are pained by the history of this country, you'd like to think that they would take the initiative to be like, if we don't like these people, let's study them so that they don't do it again and figure out how they oppressed us in the first place so that they don't do it again. And if there's anything of value that they bring, let us learn from them and collaborate. Because at the end of the day, we're currently stuck here. Uh, and if we're stuck here together, how can we make it work? So I, I appreciate you doing that um, and, and telling your story. I think we need to have more of those stories. I hope in some way you'll document El Salvador, Botswana, Israel, because we have to learn. No, definitely. Talking about that, what you're saying, you to use your pockets. We were this thing in, in prison where the Costa guys wanted to watch rugby yeah. and we wanted to watch soccer. And I think the national teams, there was an international rugby game on and there was a national soccer game yeah. on. And we then decided in jail, what are we going to do? There's only one TV in the kitchen. 
uh, where we're sitting. And then we sure. said, no, guys, 10 minutes, 10 minutes, it's for, to keep the peace. Sure. And then every time we switch over to the rugby, there will be a goal on the other side. We'll hear from the other <laughs> cell. And then one day I just said, you know what? Stop it. I woke up there. I said, we not, nobody's changing this TV. Ark. I said, no one is changing this TV. I'm standing here. We want to watch soccer until the end. You guys can do what you want to do. And then the quarter guys were saying, one, one of the leaders saying, ah, leave him. Let him watch. It was Arsenal, actually. Yeah. Let him watch his Arsenal. He will never see them live. Mm. That hurt me so badly. I don't want to show that moment. <laughs> so my first 8,000 I had when I came out of jail, I went to go buy a ticket to watch oh, the Arsenal yes. game. And I went with Charles, went to go watch the game. But when I got there, I had no money left. Mm. One thing that you just said that I never forget, I woke up and I wanted to see the newspaper. I wanted to read the newspaper and there was nobody there and there was a stack of newspapers. Yeah. And next to the stack of newspapers was money. You just throw money and you take your change. No ways. Yes. And I was like, where's the newspaper <laughs> guy? And I paid and I took my change. And I saw other notes there. I'm like, well, now I know which country to come to when I'm totally broke. <laughs> I've hit down where I have nothing. I'm coming here to mess up the system. But it is, it is, it is that what you are saying. Mm. that we must learn and, and how we are affecting. And people underestimate. One thing I see when I go on Twitter, yeah. it's the funniest thing, not the funniest, the strangest thing for me is we underestimate what apartheid did to us black people. We, and I'm, when I say black, I include Indian and colored. Okay. What apartheid did to us, it's something that we will never fathom. Mm. Apartheid was one of the greatest evil inventions in the history of mankind. Mm. The fathers of apartheid were so brilliant, and see where might disagree with me, that the system lived on until today, long after their death. Absolute brilliance mm. is building something that still goes on long after you've died. Mm. I see myself as an independent person, minded person. I was in jail working in a prison shop. Mm. And prisoners would buy because that was like the cushiest job in jail. So I took that job. And I was working in the prison shop. And one day I left my head up and I saw a 12-year-old white boy. I'm like, my boy, what are you doing here? He's like, oh, um, I get in the winkel and I get in the house and I He said, oh, sorry, boy, I'll talk to you now. And I gave him something there. Come, I'll talk to you now. Something for free? Yeah, I gave him like, no, wait for me there. Because I, I was so concerned about yes, the 12-year-old. Yes, worried about him, yeah. But then that moment while I'm there, I'm realizing, oh, my word. Every day there's black kids standing here, they're 12 years, 13 year mm. old. I never feel a sense of empathy for them. Yeah. I just said, hey, bring back that chocolate. <laughs> Yo, he's breaker. <laughs> it's like, Han. And I took the chocolate back. And, but what I'm trying to say is that how even I felt sorry for this one white boy. Mm. While there were multitudes of same age kids sometimes being brought into jail. Yeah. That is the power of apartheid. It Bla was black inferiority and white it superiority. It's implanted in us. Yeah. Bantu education served its purpose. You see it, you see it up until today. Mm. You know, it was so powerful that you know that a white warden, a black warden in jail, had to address a black, a white prisoner as manier. Hmm. Uh, they didn't eat what we ate in jail. They ate a different meal in really? jail. They would have Kellogg's, bruh. Like, like they would have Kellogg's, they would not have what we have. The warden, the black warden, had to address the white prisoners' manier. That's how powerful apartheid was. So what I'm saying is that we we are light years ahead of ridding ourselves totally of what the wrong has been committed to us. Mm. We must be commended for forgiving. Mm. You know, we, I always look when white people start bringing up my past and I'm thinking like, <laughs> how like, dare you? How dare you? How dare you? How dare you bring up my past? Because I would have been, you know, in, nobody talks, everybody talks about the struggle credentials, but they never talk about the black alpha males. Mm. A lot of criminals in the black community were alpha males. They were not beta males. Nobody speaks about that. Because the alpha male will never say yabas, nearbas. Who's a bus? It, it's impossible. Now, all that that dreams that 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 you look at, I know of guys that could, bro, they could steal any car. They could spin, they could drive like Ham Lewis Hamilton. And those guys, because they were alpha males, mm. they couldn't see their way in to go yabas, near bus, 
and being controlled by the most stupid white. And those are conversations that we never have. Kaysen, I'm trying to bite my tongue, man. I've got I've got so many questions sure. to ask you, but you're you're triggering a thought in my head now because you mentioned this earlier, and I I also tried to avoid it. I'm not asking you a question because I know it's going to end up being a long chat. There's an argument that there's currently a feminization project of men, and that the idea of especially black men, strong black men, must be destroyed by all means whether you're pumping them with Ritalin and you claim they have ADHD or whether you're putting them in juvenile delinquency or whether you're pumping them with some other medicine or whether you're just telling them that masculinity is wrong. And to what you're saying about the fact that we, we're not allowed to celebrate alpha black men, especially within a white system, raises a conversation I normally raise with, with wealthy white people when they speak about black corruption. And I say to them, Let's use someone that we both know, uh, ex-president Jacob Zuma. And I say, let us assume, this has not been proven, but let us assume that Jacob Zuma was, sorry, was corrupt and that himself, the Guptas and many other people were hell-bent on stealing as much money as possible from the state. Let's assume that. Let's all agree. Now I need to ask you, if white people came into this country and colonized and exploited and killed and built wealth off the back of black sweat and blood. And you expect black people to come in and compete fairly when you've created systems that keep them as far away as possible from fair treatment. How do you expect them to act? Some of these guys struggle at school. They're not athletes. They're not the token black. They're not ready to say, ya boss, ya manier. That guy wants to have a nice house. He wants to have a nice car. What do you expect him to do? We went to school. Let's say you and I went to school. I was a star student. I played first team rugby, first team soccer. Girls loved me. The white teachers loved me. I went to varsity. Today I'm an engineer. I also played a little bit for the Springboks. I live in a three million rand house. We went to school together and you're like, I didn't do well at school. I wasn't good at sports. I wasn't light. I also want a house like you. I also want a household like you. What must happen now? But then, you know, there's, that, I think there's some hard truths that we don't want to face. What you said now, it's so deep. Let me just, uh, allow me please to say something on it. I think number one, uh, before we beat white people with a stick, <laughs> I want to say something about that. Yeah. Do you know that during apartheid, there was not Afrikaner balloonists? We didn't have Afrikaner balloonists. <laughs> we have 13 Afrikaner balloonists today. Mm. Those 13 were made in democracy. White people made their money off tenders. No one else, there's no other way they could have made that they made their money. So many white conglomerate that didn't start with tenders. The word tenderpreneur was coined after they've made their money. It's those people that went to university, they study and then they burn the university. But here's the issue where I once had a problem, we were sitting in a dinner. And I nearly left the dinner because Musi, my money, said something. I was so offended. Mm. But I took him on with it. He said, no, we must first get economic power. And I just, and I remember the dinner was with a few leaders of political parties. I said to him, no, you don't understand power. That's why you, you make such a nonsensical statement. We don't need economic power. Once mm. you have state power, state power is more powerful than economic power because state power flows from Economic power flows from state power. Mm. State power writes the check for economic power. Now people say we need economic power. No, we don't need economic power. We need a real state. Let's mm. take countries like Russia. Let's take Russia. I was actually going to ask, that sounds like the Russian model. Because even before Putin, there was, um, I don't know if it was Boris or someone. He had his own oligarchs. Putin came in with his own boys, Roman mm. and the gents. And... It's almost like you take ESCOM, you take Transnet, you guys will be billionaires, but just make sure that the country works. Yeah, not necessarily. It shows who's the boss. You look at China. Let's, mm -hmm. Russia's controversial now. Let's go to China. <laughs> yeah. China has got more billionaires than any country at the moment. Yeah. And the state is in charge. Mm. And what is his name? Jack Ma 
was yeah. trying to be in charge. Yes. And state power crushed economic power. It's a fact. Now, in this country, Pen, I look at young people like yourself, mm. and I use you because I understand you, I understand issues. And my heart breaks for you, all of you. Mm. My heart breaks for them when I look at them at Twitter and saying that you live in the wealthiest country in the world with minerals. No country is as well endowed with minerals like South Africa. No country. Not a single country in the world. Maybe the DRC, but we'll allow South Africa today. My brother, not even. Not even the DRC? Not even. They can say what they like. These are things they put in your mind. Okay. That you are not the most powerful. Okay. Let me just, on that issue. Do you know, during apartheid, we were the top gold producing country. Mm. With democracy, we slid number two, number four, number eight, mm -hmm. and we're out of the top ten. It's deliberate. Why it's deliberate? Because now the gold price in the world is up. But if South Africa works, the gold price will come down. So they got to keep us out of the game. Mm -hmm. Coming back to my point, I don't blame white billionaires that, that running havoc here. Because they control. Mm -hmm. They control the courts, they control what's happening to us. They, con they control, control the media the that you don't bread. like. They control the media that you don't they like. They control the price of bread. And black people were dying because they ate bologna. Who has ever been found guilty? Or where has there ever been a commission for, who's responsible for that death of 25 black people that ate bologna? Mysteriosis. Yes. I'm saying to you, my point I'm trying to make is that it's nice to want to blame the white people. Mm. But the white people are taking advantage of our incapability to mm. rule. To rule. To rule. If you are the government, you set the rules. You shouldn't have to steal what you're in control of. Yes. Now, when you are in charge, you are in charge. And you know, people say, yeah, I'm saying you are the government. You set the rules. You say the which in which field the match is going to be played at. Mm. You set everything as a government. You go to countries. I look at my friend that I'm actually meeting tomorrow for lunch. He was he had shares in, in the, the energy company in, in Paris, mm. in France. Government just nationalized them now. Yeah, I saw that. They just nationalized them now. That's that's what the state does. Mm. They're like, yes, your money, we are taking. Mm. But we are not ready for that conversation yet. They say you are a dictator when you start talking like that. Of course. Yes, I'm a benevolent dictator. I'm hey. not going to lie about that. Getting back on track. I apologize for that deviation. <laughs> uh, how, would you have, how would you rate yourself as a mayor? You know, I have grossly underestimated what it requires to be a mayor. Okay. Which is a good and a bad thing, because that naivety means you, you might push beyond. I would not have achieved all the things I achieved mm. if I didn't have money and friends with money. Okay. The system is rigged in such a way that some of these municipalities can never come out of debt. Some of these municipalities mm. can must forever be in trouble and they would look like they are incompetent and corrupt. Mm. So that when the state does not, when the arm of a state is not operating, mm. that's where private sector takes over. I look at Kokama. Mm. The by-election happening in Kokama, so I had time to look through everything in Kokama. I couldn't believe that the overdraft, the municipalities has the overdraft with APSA. They can't get out of that overdraft. The mm. interest being paid on that overdraft, it is Insane. That's like owing foreign nations. Yes. It's it's dead it's dead slavery. Yeah, but I'm not saying that mayors and officials have, have no role to play and yeah. they are they are squeaky clean. Yeah. No, some of them are corrupt to the core. Sure. But what I'm saying is that they don't even know how the system has been rigged. You can't do nothing. You know, you look at the PFMA, mm. the MFMA. Those those things are not geared towards fixing what is broken. I managed to fix what is broken because I operated outside the MFMA. Mm. So people say, he's breaking the rules. The MFMA, the Municipal Finance Act or whatever. Sure. I'm like, it's, it's not municipal money. Mm. It's municipal finance. MF, municipal finance. Yeah. I didn't operate that. And that's the only reason why I managed to fix five of the six pools. Mm. Why I managed to come there and I would... Uh, 
start businesses in that area for mm. with the locals yeah. and people from outside. Why I managed to bring clean water to some residents that never had clean water mm. for 28 years. You were speaking about that last year and I was I was thinking about it leading up to this conversation with what's happened in Haman's Kral. Yes, I, I brought, listen, I went there to f- put people, to put bucket toilets for people because they were using per toilets. Mm. They were using bucket toilets, sorry, I came there to put them flushing toilets. Sure. They're using not per toilets, bucket toilets. While I was busy there, I saw a child out of a guava juice bottle, a juice bottle, mm. drinking water that's dirty. I said, hey, what you drinking? He says, no, it's water. And I opened the, the tap mm. and there was water in Luhamka. This is a place under the DA in Central Karwa. I opened the tap and it was mud water. And I said, why do you guys drink this water? He said, no, we cook it. And he said, look at that. And there was asbestos tanks. Just the fact that I saw asbestos tanks. Mm. And they said, dead animals fall in there. And that moment I said, I must change this. But the media will never write about that. Today, every household there has got clean drinking water out of aluminium tanks. Nobody's using the asbestos tank anymore. Those are the things I've managed to do in one year. I've managed to fix pools in Reha Park while mm. I was the mayor in Central Karua. I've managed to, to bring hope to the people. Mm. Do you think I've succeeded? I, I'll give myself... Uh, a, but not an A plus yet. Because there, pe- there were people striking. What was that about? Ah, those are lazy people. Those <laughs> ones are uh, EP, WP. Those, those people, you know, for me, I've got a problem with that system. People lay in the sun. <laughs> go, go back to that picture and you see that orange. Everybody's wearing orange there. They're not prisoners. They are these people in the sun the whole time. So when I came, I was disrupting that ambience of sleeping. <laughs> during thing, and they, they wait for my last day to, to, to they would never have dead. To march while I was there. I would have fired all of them. <laughs> they knew that. How do you march on the last day? The whole country knows Gaten McKenzie is going. The whole country knows Gaten McKenzie is going. You go like, Gaten must go. Like this thing, Gaten must go. <laughs> like, but they would going. not have dead if they had done that while I was there. And it's like that I'm already packed up. I'm watching that thing from Joba. <laughs> I'm like, ah, these people have been with me here the whole time. Now they say I must go. <laughs> uh, following from that question, um, one of the mindset shifts that I hope South Africans very soon can get into is to stop this popularity contest that we have in politics and focus on um, delivery. One of the cool things you said when we sat together was when politicians make you a promise, how you hold them accountable is ask them to give you a date. Yes. Tell me when this will be done by because then I can measure you. You've got stuff that is measurable that you've achieved. Mm. Would you consider, or rather, why not continue doing that work across the country? I don't know if it falls under social development. Look, we can crack jokes about it now and say you can become the minister of swimming pools, Mm -hmm. the minister of getting rid of bucket toilets, but you've already got a track record of things that you can do. Go to Haman Skrull, get the people there to be like, give Gaten the budget. This guy has done it before. Let him do it again. You become the Israel El Salvador. You've done it. So give this guy money and let him sort out all these things around the country. Would you consider that or do you think it would waste your time in, in ascending to at least the presidency? No, that's what I'm going to do exactly. Okay. I'm going to, there's certain things I promised myself, mm. not to the population, that I've not done. Yeah. One of them is there's a pool call in the Rizdin. Must fix that. Second thing is I want to put a tennis court for those kids there. They had a tennis court is derelict now. Mm. I said I'm going to fix that. Mm. I, I said, uh, uh, so those are the stuff that I'm going to do before the 1st of September to fix that pool. Uh, they say it looks like Ukraine hit it, or <laughs> Russia hit it, or whatever. But I like to give myself a target mm. that give me next week, I'll fix it. Mm. I'm going to go around the country and go and introduce our party, particularly in black communities, mm. because we are very well known in color communities. Okay. But I'm not going to go there and make promises. I'm going to look at what's wrong there. Mm. Instead of buying the people t-shirts and what, I'm going to fix stuff for them. Mm. And that's what I'm going to do for 12 months. And I'm going to document every day when I'm going to go somewhere. Yeah. There's a lady the other day, she says to me, I don't have a husband. And this is two weeks ago. I live in fine town. I also want to get people renting from mm. me. But there's these rocks in my yard. And she has, she says, for 20 years, I've been begging. Mm. I said, next week and Tuesday, I'll come and remove it. Mm. I came with the machinery. We removed the 20. We removed 33 stones from my yard. Jeez. And I did that in one day. 
that woman couldn't speak to me. She was just crying. Mm. Now, I'm not saying, I'm saying that if you want to have your choice of politician, mm. just let him give you a date. That's all. Mm. If he says, I'm going to do this, ask when. And then write the date down. Yeah. Then you say, but you, you see, you are sure. liar. Yes. Done. Mm. <sighs> no, let me not carry on with that. Uh, I had, I had a, a follow-up question because... You know, we speak about Orania. Uh, I've, I've spoken about how I admire Afri Forum and the work they're doing. This is not a question. Um, I just want to make a note of, I, I think politics is a very dirty game and, it, and it's distracting for people that want to actually get work done. And if you can get wealthy people and other people that are capable and volunteers, you know, maybe kids that work in corporate who want to work on weekends to, to come through and solve some of these problems outside of even politics, Maybe set up a Gate and McKenzie Foundation. I think that would be really dope. Maybe you can run both at the same time. I don't know if you guys have come no, I'm not going to set up a foundation. I want political power. <laughs> I have time now for foundation. I'm going to set up. You see, that what you just said about our people sometimes. You know, <laughs> I don't have time for foundation now. 12 months I'm going to do. I'm going for presidency. And you know, people, you know what's funny, eh? Sure. That we as a as, as, as thing must learn. You know the price we pay. If you are, if Penn is in a picture with a white guy, then you know that's apartheid thinking. That's they be like, ah, look, look, he owns Penn. That ah, is that's, that's that's Rob, man. No, but the issue is that you know, I mean, so many, not Rob now, no. No, I'm but saying, I'm, no, I'm saying me. For, for me, those pictures, yes. it's just been Rob, and it no, sucks. No, but Rob, let's, let's. I'm gonna get back to Rob now. But there's so many white guys I'm with in pictures with. Yeah. And then they say, and why I'm saying not Rob because I know Rob is richer than what I am. But there's people, white guys, I'm richer than them. <laughs> then they say, look, 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 he's funding Mackenzie. I'm like, ah, this man, I can swipe him. <laughs> with a savings card, now I'm see on Twitter. I am this man, I'm the one that he's funding. But there are people like Rob. It's like, Yeah, you it's, know, a, it's an inferiority complex, it's an inferiority and, complex and self-hate. And when they see a black and a white man, they immediately assume yeah. this one is a step. It's like these guys, when they have money, they go for white girls. Mm. They're basically saying that the next step up is a white girl. Sure. It's that thinking, and you can't take that thinking out sure. the next day. And you look at, I mean, like they say, uh, Rob, even with myself, mm. uh, Rob is controlling Gaten. Mm. There's two things Rob believe in. Rob is my friend. Sure. I mean, like they, my they can't, friend. They can't believe that you can be friends with a white person who's well off, who comes from a family that's a legacy family. It's impossible. Bruh. I tell you, the Rob and myself are friends. I know his children. His children knows my children. I know mm. his... His father, I mm. have lunch with his parents. We are friends. Mm. Rob believes in an independent Cape Town. Sure. He believes in that. Yes, he does. Rob believes that the DA uh, and PA must work together. Mm. But it's not happening at the moment, so that must tell you. I've got my own mind. Sure. And when you look at a person like Rob, I can ask Rob now, Rob, can you please go to this place and put toilets for the people there? Mm. Rob will sign that check for that community. Sure. Rob will do stuff. So I'm saying that you know, we must get out of this thing of white, black, whatever, and look at more South Africa. Mm. What is good for our country? And let's start doing what's good for our country. I used to have that thing where people say they're going to emigrate. I'm like, let them go. <laughs> let them go. But then time and sense taught me. Mm. There's things called the brain drain. You lose the best of the best. Mm. I mean, which country would not want to have an Elon Musk? Now today, black people want to claim Ellen. True. But when Ellen said he's leaving, they said, let him go. Yeah. Now they're like, ah, Ellen is from Pretoria. Mm. Hey, Joe, you know that man used to tip me when he's parking his car. I'm like, I talking nonsense, but yeah. I want to speak about ESCOM, but since you're speaking about brain drain, you know, I, I try to paint a, a relatable picture, especially to black people, to, to get an understanding of the things they complain about. One of the saddest stories of brain drain is an internal story in the country where under the Bantu stance, uh, and because of the way colonization happened in this country, Eastern Cape intelligentsia and academia was leading at some point. Fort Hare, some of the schools there, I mean, some of the top lawyers, accountants, professionals in this country are from the Eastern Cape. But as soon as South Africa got integrated, a lot of those people moved to Cape Town, some to Durban, some to Johannesburg, really top people, and they've never gone back home. The Eastern Cape is one of the poorest provinces in this country. It's had presidents, it's got billionaires, it's got really wealthy black Kosa people, but they've never been able to go back and, and plant back home. And that's the, the danger with not creating a fertile space because the Eastern Cape is also very highly corrupt. 
And the guys that are there chowing tenders, they're not friendly with people that are qualified, want to do things, and it becomes an issue. And it's almost a similar fight, but people don't understand it when you're saying the white person's going. They say go. It's like chasing away the smartest guy from your neighborhood, and then you wonder why your neighborhood is falling apart. Yes. No, he speaks too much English, this one. He thinks he's too clever. Now you're living in potholes. Now you're living in crime because... The dumbest, most rebellious, most destructive child is the one that's now leading your ward that's true. or your neighborhood. The kid that you thought was acting like Uchi's, he's there living a good life where there's no potholes. And it's sad now because you also won't let him in because you want to say maybe he's captured or whatever the case may be. Sorry, Eskom. Last year, mid-December, you wrote three posts on Facebook. Uh, I captured those posts and I made a video about it on YouTube. I don't know why it took me this long, man, but I made a video a couple of weeks ago reading these posts that you made. When Andre Tereta sat with Annika Larson, I think she's at ENCA or ETV, mm. and then after that she released his book, I think Truth to Power, um, he was coming up with these, there's all these mafias at ESCOM and the truck mafia, and I'm like, no, I've heard this before, man. And, and I was like, Gaten spoke about this. This goes back now to the media story. I'd, I'd like to hear your thoughts outside, I guess, of what you've documented, but even if you include it, your thoughts on, on Andre Tereta, your thoughts on ESCOM, and maybe you can also add maybe my frustration with the fact that all the things Andre Tereta you raised, and you even put your hand up and you were like, I'm, I'm here, I'm willing to run ESCOM and sort things out. How did you feel when <laughs> the media to this day was treating him as a hero? Quoting almost verbatim the things that you were raising last year, even. All right. I think, and I'm going to make it an example with what we understand. When we go back to for funerals, when there's a funeral in where we're coming from, us that's not from Joburg, mm. that program will be changed when you get there. The guy that's paying for everything. Mm. You can have a program, that's what he's speaking, and you see, even they change, no, no. You know, so those things happen because the guy from the town is coming yes. back to the village. That's the type of thinking we have in South Africa. The black guy, us, we are the guy waiting that's been living with this person. But when the program of the funeral, the people of English from the big city <laughs> are the ones. So they only listen to that man. And that's the issue with... Andre the Rater is an average white male. Average. I need to jump in there. You know, you spoke about the billionaires we've got now, the white ones who have been built mm. under this democracy. Mm. We don't talk about. Tito Mboweni recommended Andre the Rater. Umama Togo Titiza. Ubabu Kwede Mantashe. Ibrahim Patel. Um, there's one more. Uh, Praveen Kordan. These are the four ministers that actually endorsed Andre Tere to yes, become did, CEO. But he served them right. He did them. He, I was so happy what he's doing to them. Because he's an average white male. They're smart white people. Smart white people, I know. Mm. Andre Tere doesn't even come close to that. He's average. Teetering more on the dumb side. How? Oh, this guy. This guy has nothing that you can show demonstrable that he's done in corporate South Africa. For him to have to put all of us people in South Africa at his mercy. Tito mm. Mbaweni, that man is another fool. You know, you've been put in charge of people to make sure that people live a prosperous life. And what do you do every day? You cook nice meals and waste meals and do nonsense. The people are looking at you, you know. People, don't forget the tin fish. Yes, but people don't understand that politics, there's. You have to look at how does how would that come across? Yeah, it's like Percep the minister perception, with perception management. No, yeah, the minister with the with the white jersey. Yes, Michael Kors. Yes, that I've got Gucci's electricity. I've got Gucci's. I've got Louis Vuittons. But look what I'm coming with here. Yeah, because I can't come here with my Gucci's mm. and trying to show off to the to the people. Mm. You gotta think who you are. Leader, you cook every day. You are busy cooking and throwing some of the food away. That this was a flop. In a country where you were responsible, yeah. partly for it's the men that were to the people. It is insulting. It tells me the type of leader. So I'm not shocked that he brought under the rater. So 
to move away from under the radar, I just want to tell you that he's, he's the average white male that they put in charge of the most I'm not laughing. asset, the most important asset in the country. Yeah. So I'm glad he's dealing with them. Mm. A smart white male would not have dealt with them. Mm. He would have had other ways to deal with them. Sure. Then they said under the radar there, they must have taken Prince Michelle there. Because under the radar is when they really want to write a book. Writing a book, you don't just wake up writing a book. Yeah. He was busy writing a book while we were sitting in darkness. Sure. Then, you know, uh, here's the issue that people don't want to hear, and I never get a chance to say this. It's so easy to stop load shedding. Mm. You stop load shedding with coal. We are sitting on 420 years of proven reserves, mm. which means we might sit on a billion years of proven re of, re of, re of reserves, mm. but not yet proven. Sure. But 420 years is proven. is proven. Now, if you can't stop load shedding with coal, there's something wrong with you. But then you move down to Central Karua, where your whole answer is for load shedding. There's two things there that can stop load shedding in the next six months. People say it's going to take 10 years nonsense. Six months? Six months. What you have in Central Karua? You have two, two ways. You have what you, Central Karua hit a lotto of renewables. And I want to go to renewables before I come back to coal. Because mm. this thing needs a triple energy mix, multi-energy mix, mm. let me put it that way. You can't just say... You must, we are in such a crisis that anything that works must be added on. Mm. Now you look at Central Karua. There's two things in Central Karua that I don't think people understand how easy it is to sort this thing out. Mm. They hit the jackpot. We call it the renewable jackpot. Number one, they've got sun during the day. Mm. One. Two, they've got wind at night. Three, they've got transmission, evacuation. Mm. So they can transmit energy out of Central Karua. They can transmit energy out of, and they got vast tracts of land, number four. Mm. If you put up the next six months, a lot of uh, solar there, mm. you'll have wind, you'll have, you've got sun, mm. you've got transmission, and you've got uh, vast tracts of land. Mm. Let's move away. Central Karua is sitting, it was proven yesterday, actually. It was proven. Yesterday was, uh, what was the date? Yes, Monday the 13th. I think it was proven this week. Okay. That Central Karua is sitting on the eighth largest gas deposit in the world. Eighth largest gas, gas deposit. deposit in the world. Proven. I'm not talking here about. We are sitting on more than 200 TCFs, trillion, trillion cubic feet of gas. Sasol is built on two. Most gas on four. We are sitting with 200. You can't tell people that because they're going to start bombing our country and no, overthrowing they, they, our government. Let me tell you, it is it is proven. Let me tell you how America's going to come here and give us 8.5 um, billion. <laughs> we know what's going to happen. The, the, the first geologist said uh, it was the guy of Shell, which I know he liked because they wanted to fool us. Yeah. He said we are only sitting on 13 trillion cubic feet. And then the geoscience in South Africa said we are sitting on 336 trillion cubic feet. And the Americans came. I've gathered the report. Because I was the mayor. Mm. The American says, no, you're sitting on 250 million, uh, 250 trillion cubic feet. The American said it. Now, what I'm saying to you is, now we have been told we must not do coal. When I was in, in, in Europe mm. three months ago, they are destroying, they are lighting the coal-fired plants up again. Mm. We are being told not to think out. Sure. Do you know that in Richards Bay Terminal, the export of coal is now higher, 720% higher than it was two years ago. But we are being told, we, are, we don't have leaders. They, are, they have no commercial sense or they are bored or they are scared of these people. A guy like me, I will say, Sola, start now. Uh, and don't tell me there's no money. There's money for everything except for the things that can better the lives of the majority of people of this country. I will say to them, today, let us do the uh, gas, mm. instead of going to get gas in Mozambique. What they don't know is Al-Qaeda can just blow up everything there in Mozambique. Mm. Then we are in darkness here. Because there's terrorist organizations there's terrorist in Mozambique. organizations there. Yeah. But what I'm saying is coal. I will say, extract the coal. Once 2024 comes, we'll extract coal. 
We will extract the coal and we will burn the coal and we will not get wet coals here. We'll get a grade mm-hmm. instead of sending a grade to Europe. We're keeping Europeans warm yeah. and our people in the dark. So I want to say to every listener of yours, this thing is man-made. Mm. They want to sell ESCOM. There's ways to fix this thing. There's enough smart people in white community, black community, Indian community, and colored community to sort out load sharing mm. in a matter of months. Why is it that they would say, for instance, uh, the, the big companies are not really complaining, the majors. Mm. The majors are not truly complaining. They're Go not. to Santon. The lights are on during the night, mm. but our people must sit in darkness. We have leaders that are scared of the international world. And their decisions are informed by what those people want them to do. Mm. Why would you say we must not do coal? And you give us 8.5 billion, but you don't think about the many thousands that will lose their jobs in the coal industry. Sure. 8.5 billion US dollars is nothing. The coal industry makes that money a month for the ones they don't know. Hmm. I don't know if you're comfortable to entertain conspiracy theories. Yes, I I've, have. I've got a few of my own. Um, one of the theories I, I'd, I'd like to raise is that we might have a, a gas and maybe even an oil belt that comes down from Angola, down Namibia, to places like the Karoo, maybe the Eastern Cape going up to Mozambique. And it might explain why so many people are setting up solar farms. I think the solar is going to be a front for gas in the future. And it makes me wonder why the Sheikh of the United Arab Emirates randomly came to buy land in the Eastern Cape. I've got a funny feeling that there's probably something that they've discovered there as well. I'd like to hear if you think maybe we might have a belt that goes beyond just the Karoo. And I'd like, I don't know how dangerous these conversations are to what you're saying about our leaders being scared. That our country is not really controlled by our government and our politicians. It's controlled by, I mentioned this company because it's popular, but there are other companies that are not as popular, but companies like Glencore, which get to dictate the terms of what moves commodities. They're involved in all our mineral resources. Before Glencore, there was Anglo-American. It was the big daddy of the mining mafia, globally, in my opinion. There's a whole lot of others now. But these guys seem to control and dictate. And even if we do find coal in the, I mean, gas in the Karoo, and it gets explored, I don't know if South Africans are going to benefit. I feel like Canadian, Australian, American, and some Asian, European companies are going to come here and we're going to clap hands but all of this stuff, even if it makes money here, is going to benefit those countries there. And where does that leave us if any of these conspiracies are true? Will we always be second, third class citizens watching people having a party in our home and on our land and clapping hands when it's actually not for us to clap? We're just going to beg for a job there in that little American company and say, I work for that big company. And that's all you'll ever have. But you'll never really own the commodities and and the world in your country? It comes down to leadership. Let me first tell you, there's no conspiracy, what you just said, regarding the issue of do we have a belt? Mm. Of course we do. That's how minerals work. Minerals is not sporadic. It follows a reef Mm. in gold. It follows a belt. It follows an oil line. So it is there. Secondly, regarding the issue of, 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 of the shake of thing, Mm. I wouldn't agree with you because I think that he's got so much money that he could have, he doesn't need to lie about what he wants in this country. But he wouldn't be lying to us. He'd be lying to the other potential. That I do not know. I'm just saying that he's got enough money to to buy anything he wants to buy in South Africa. Sure. All right. Thirdly, when it comes to the issue of us not benefiting, we've been benefited from nothing. You know, in Norway, Mm. they have the Norwegian Sovereign Wealth Fund. Yes where every citizen benefit. In Alaska, they have the oil, where every citizen benefit. I've seen that, yeah. They get paid every year, the yes. citizens, just the to be citizen. a citizen, yeah. In South Africa, we, we are not like Norway. We're not as unfortunate as Norway to only have oil. <laughs> We're not as unfortunate as Alaska to have oil. We've got oil, we've got gas, we've got gold, we've got chrome, we've got iron ore, we've got manganese, we've got diamonds, we've got silver, we've got copper, We've got platinum. Platinum. There's nothing that we do not have. Do you know people think you are dreaming when you say we've got natural stone, we've got timber, we've got the ocean economy. They think you are dreaming when you say 
You just in South Africa you can just chill and you can get money every month. But how is it that we have all those minerals, but we have the world's highest unemployment figure? It doesn't make sense. It's like dying of hunger in a supermarket. But nobody is ready for the conversation. They are ready to cancel people on Twitter. They are ready to see who's wearing this, who's not doing that, how many kids does Penn have. <laughs> how they are ready for things like that. It's like you are asking for support money from them every month. <laughs> you see, people are ready for, they don't know people's reason. I come from a house where it was only me and my sister, and it was a five-year difference, and I said, I want a big family. Mm -hmm. And as long as my family is not taking welfare money, sure. it's my decision. I'm saying to you, and this is the conversation, you look like a madman. So when you say to black South Africans, colored South Africans, whatever South Africans, and say, guys, you live in a rich country. Let us, you just need to change the game where government is in charge and not just multinationals are in charge. Mm. You look at gold, you look at platinum, the Northwest has got number one platinum deposits in the world. Mm. There's nothing there, bro. There's absolutely nothing. But people are not ready for these conversations. Mm. People are not ready of how minerals can change people's lives. I bought a mine in the Northwest. People were living in mud houses when I got there. When it's seven years ago today, there's nobody living in a mud house today. And I didn't build their houses. I made pressure. I make the land available. I, made, I put pressure that government must look after those people. Mm. We are paying those people every month. Every citizen gets money at my mind. Every month. Because I understand what minerals can do. But now in South Africa, black people, because he's got a university degree, and that is this degree spoils them. Because he thinks degree is life. <laughs> One guy was saying, I'm not educated. I said, the person that taught you at university, I hire six of them. Ark. Don't tell me I'm not educated. If I want to know what you something, I'll not ask you. I'll ask the person that taught you to do it, not to teach me. I don't have time to learn things like that. I'm old. Who's so the, who's this guy? <laughs> a guy called Ricky. I was so annoyed. Eh? Yeah, but you don't have a degree. Yeah, yeah. But you want to be Why our leader. I said, yeah, name? chief. What do you mean I don't have a degree? I don't need a degree. I honestly don't need a degree. Mm. People sit at home for eight years. There was one woman, Setu. She went on Twitter and I saw Setu saying for eight years. I gave her a job. Because I just couldn't go past. I didn't know that woman. I saw a tweet. She's like, for eight years, I'm depressed. I sit at home and I've got two degrees. Now, our problem is it's good to have education. is very good. Mm. But you see, education, it's like a car. Mm. Without petrol, mm. you can have the nicest Ferrari, you are going nowhere. No way. Now, education also goes with common sense. They laugh at people selling apples. Yes. The person selling apples at Park Station lives better than an unemployed graduate. In 100%. South Africa. And, but it all comes down to geopolitics. Mm. We need leaders that take decisions based on, people don't understand, and I never get to ask about geopolitics because they think I don't know these things. Mm. They want to ask me about my past. You look at, there's two rules that govern geopolitics. It is territorial, and it's territorial, and it is, it, it is economic. Okay. Those are the two rules governing the geopolitics. It is territorial interest. Mm. Land. Yes, territor land, yeah. uh, territorial interest. So where does your border stop? Like sure. the Crimea issue. Yeah. And it is economic interest. Mm. Now I look at what's happening with Russia and Ukraine, for instance. People ask me on Twitter, which side are you on? Bruh, I'm on no side. And that's also fine. Mm. They say, yeah, but Russia. <laughs> now I'm a, I was a guy that said, Russia was standing with us during the, during the, during apartheid. I said, no, my brother. The USSR stood with us. Mm. Ukraine and Russia both form parts yeah, part Soviet Union. of the Soviet Union. Yeah. We two brothers are fighting today. Sure. Those are brothers. Now you ask me about what's your stand. Now, this is my stand. I'll say it on the show for the first time. I think NATO overplayed the hand mm. by encroaching on the space of Russia, or of, of, of going into Ukraine. Because mm. it's on the border of Russia. America would not allow Russia to go and put up a satellite. Uh, military sure. military uh, base, base the border in, of Mexico in or Canada Cuba, Mexico Canada they yeah. would never 
And I think because of the history, some the, the Russia is within the right to say, no, no, we don't want you here. Mm. I just think Russia should have engaged the little brother more mm. before the tanks start going in. That's my opinion. Okay. Because I've been to both countries. I've been to Russia. I've been to Ukraine. Mm. And they are one people. Sure. And one people are fighting now, and we must say to hell with it. Then you get Sarukan saying, to hell with Agua. It's fine to say to hell with Agua. Mm. But that's not how a state does not work like an individual. Sorry, just to, to cut yeah. in there. So, so Agua, for people that don't know, it's the African Growth and Opportunity Act, which is a United States Trade Act, which was enacted in, in May 2000. Uh, it provides eligible sub-Saharan African countries with duty-free access to the U.S. market for over 1,800 products, in addition to the more than 5,000 products that are eligible for duty-free access under the Generalized System of Preferences program. ACOA gives duty-free access to 25% of South African exports to the U.S., South Africa's second biggest single country trading partner after China. In essence, ACOA is basically our trade, one of our trade agreements and benefits with America to say, look, some of your stuff when it comes to America will not be taxed. Uh, I think a lot of people don't understand that. My apologies. Please, please but, may you continue. But that is jobs what you just described there. Mm. Now, when you sit and say to hell with America, let them take their goa. Mm. You're already sitting with a crisis of jobs. Yeah. You better replace that with something. I'm interested to hear what is our government going to replace that with. Now, they don't understand geopolitics. Let's take Japan. And I'll make you two examples. Mm. Japan, America dropped two bombs on, two atomic bombs on Japan. Yeah. Hiroshima and Nagasaki. 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 Yeah. Both in the order, it was first Hirosh the, 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 the Hiroshima mm. and Nagasaki came second. Mm. But today, America's biggest trading partner is Japan. Yeah. Japan is a very strong economy. Because that's how international relations work. Yeah. You can't come and say, that was my friend 50 years ago, so I'm not going to offend him. I'm talking about nobody dropped atomic bombs in South Africa. Yeah. I'll make you another example, China. We say, no, but BRICS, we might be with BRICS. China is part of BRICS. China is the big brother of BRICS. But 2022, China did business with the U.S. for 690 billion U.S. dollars, mm. which was an ultimate record of trade between two countries, China and the U.S. Yes. Yeah. $692 billion. Yes. Come yeah. on. We are being told, no, 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 somebody has 20 run data. And you now say, no, 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 no. <laughs> America must go to hell. It's fine. If you say America must go to hell, but you better replace. I want to do a Facebook light. Jeez. Yeah, yeah. You must replace it with something. I'm saying to people, that's not how geopolitics work. Yeah. Geopolitics must work. Up. What is the interest of South Africa? Yeah. We must say as South Africans, is it in our interest to work with Russia? Is it in our interest to work with yeah. China or whatever? But my under my leadership, we will take a different approach to geopolitics. Politics. Mm. We will take the approach of going back to who Mandela wanted us to be. Mm. He, they wanted us to become the referee, the friend, where people, where disputes get settled. Mm. When people want people that can come and be fair, sure. they would call on South Africa. We need to stop just talking to, saying we don't talk to this country, we must reset mm. our national friends and say we are everybody's friend. Sure. And we must trade with Russia, we must trade with America without feeling guilty. Because at the moment, what you are seeing, Penn, it's a joke. One moment we say, uh, we are not going to arrest Putin, we, we, we are not going to arrest Putin, mm -hmm. and I don't think we should arrest Putin. Mm -hmm. But next moment, you hurriedly wanting to get a different next door country, can you host him for us? Mm -hmm. It's one and the same thing. Sure. It's, it's within your powers, uh, you've agreed to you're going to arrest him. But be a man about it. Say to America, we are not going to arrest him. Deal with it. Be, But don't come and talk with this side of your mouth to hell with America, but this side of the mouth you say, go and save Agua for us. Sure. Our thing is schizophrenic at the moment. Our international politics is schizophrenic. We don't need to choose a side. We must work with America. Mm. We must work with Russia. We must work with China. Mm. We must work with India. Because we don't have enemies. Sure. That's, that's, that's the president of the country, Cyril Ramaphosa's fault. I have to give kudos to Mamau Naledi Pando. She's clear. She sounded very clear and sober 
around she's about this stuff. Yes. Yeah. No, she's clear about the this person, stuff. The person who's been sending delegates to America who seems wishy-washy, unfortunately, is the president of the country. I'm just saying, here's my point I'm saying. I'm not even taking sides. Mm. I, I told you what my view is that NATO should not have expanded yeah. to the borders of, of Russia, which yeah. is Ukraine. I also think that Russia should not have attacked because that's their little brother. They should have had You can also see way. in the war how the Russia fights the war. Mm. Russia could have flattened that country, but that's not the intention. Mm. They're very strategic in how they fight the war. Yeah. And I think if they had to do it again, they would have done it differently. Mm. But I don't want people to come and say, to hell with America. Yeah. While we, and then go and back America to say, that's not how the world works. Mm. So I just want to say that South Africa needs to become the referee again. Thank you so much. Um, I'm worried about time. And about Debs, I was saying that we're going to go for like long. And I was like, we won't. Maybe ah. <laughs> <laughs> this was one of the questions I wanted to ask you. It's a bit of a heavy one. Um, it was a follow up from the ESCOM conversation. Because you spoke about if you were to head ESCOM, you deal with the criminality there. And my question was going to be, if you can deal with criminality at ESCOM, uh, would you consider maybe going uh, for the position of Minister of Police? And if you were or to work with the Minister of Police, what would be your your way to deal with the drugs in Durban, uh, some of the violence in the taxi industry, the drugs and the gangs in Cape Town, some of the gang wars that are happening in Joburg? You mentioned Westbury, where a young 11, 12-year-old girl was caught in the crossfire. Um, in some of the colored areas in, in, in the Western Cape, and then you also mentioned the political killings in KZN. What would be your solution to that? Whether you are minister of police or the president, or you have some type of influence in resolving, because this this country outside of the economic mess and outside of foreigners interfering, just us with each other, it's it's become a, a war zone and we're, we're killing each other for, for fun and for free daily. I'm a very pragmatic guy. And I can tell you now, our problems cannot be sorted out with the current constitution. Because criminals got money. They get better lawyers than the state prosecutors. Mm. And that guy will kill somebody. We see it in our communities. Next day, the guy's out. We don't have enough money for the witnesses. In Cape Town, nobody comes out as a state witness. Yeah. Because you're going to die. You're going to die. Because there's no witness protection program that's proper. Mm. The Nigerians are bragging that they own our police force. So foreigners are coming here causing havoc in our country, legal foreigners. Mm. Uh, uh, it, it's a mess. People do what they want. Somebody last week went to a soccer game and his team lost. He started killing the coach hmm. without hiding. Today, people on the N1 stop. They stop all the cars on the N1. They start robbing the cars. It's Armageddon. Yes, it's a war zone that we're in. Now, you're not going to sort, not the Gaten McKenzie. Not anybody's going to sort out this problem with the current constitution. Hmm. Hence, I said there's examples like El Salvador. And for those that don't know, allow me 30 seconds to tell me about El Salvador. Hmm. El Salvador had a guy that came in as president, Niab Bukele. Niab Bukele came in and he had 30 murders a day. A day. Niab Bukele today has had one murder for 360 days. And that one murder, he sent the whole army, the whole police, to descend on that municipality. And he caught the guy that did it with all his fellow gang members. We love democracy. We're in love with something that we don't understand. Yes, and it was given to us. We didn't ask for it. We don't understand this thing. We say we don't want the death penalty. No, we have the death penalty. Mm. Somebody can come in here and rob you guys of these cameras and kill you. Yes. What is that? It's the death penalty. It's the death penalty. I'm saying that the state must have the right to kill. I believe first your problems. Now, people, you have people arguing with me. Uh, white ladies that has never... Don't know the difference, Dacha <laughs> or Mendrix. <laughs> Tell me, no, Mr. McKenzie, that's not a deterrent. Uh, the death penalty, I'm like, have you ever stolen anything except sugar in your mother's kitchen? <laughs> you come tell me, yeah, it's not a deterrent. I was a gangster. I was a criminal. I'm saying to you, the death penalty is a deterrent. <laughs> now, nobody will tell me otherwise. I've been a gang boss. Not, I was been a boss of bosses. And I'm telling you, it's a deterrent. You start killing the bosses. Yeah. You're killing the small fish will find other ways, legal ways to survive. Yeah. At the moment, we are just going for the small fishes. 
But it's like in the Tabo Besta case, you've not seen the big guys coming in. Yeah. Something like that don't get pulled off without the big guys. Mm. But back to the issue. Today in El Salvador, in Latin America, it was the most dangerous place and it's the safest place today in the world, El Salvador. Homozo, what's your movie? Elite squad. Elite squad. Elite squad. Do you remember the area? Uh, that was Brazil. That was the first Brazil. 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 Yeah. Yes. But I'm talking there's about a El Salvador. There's, there's a movie called Elite Squad. Now, I just need to mention it on camera. Humoto has recommended it, where apparently military guys were sent in to go and deal with criminals in, in I don't know if it's in favelas. Yeah. yeah. But that, that, that type movie? of mindset. Oh. Uh, El Salvador. Nia Bukele. Nia Bukele. Came, came in and he sorted out that problem. He built a prison for 60,000 people and he took all the gangsters, he locked them up. And people say, the human rights, what about the human rights of the 30 people who were killed every day? Human rights! Human rights! The constitution, he suspended, he had a state of emergency. Mm. We go further. Was closer to home, Rwanda. Yes. In the latter part of the last century, a million people were killed. One man stepped up. He suspended, he put a state of emergency, and he fixed that country. Today, those people, Rwanda is the most developed country in the world, uh, most developed country in Africa. Yeah. And and they are growing every day. Now I'm saying to you, oh, what, Kakame. I, what I will do in South Africa, and, and don't vote for me if you don't agree with me. That is the beauty of what you have currently. Mm. I will get all these petty criminals out of jail. They stole chocolates and... <laughs> This old, let him come out of jail. They're doing five years because he's stolen five chocolates over 20 years and broken into houses. Let them come in. I'm giving them second chances. Mm. I'm coming for the big fish. Number one, I will lock them up. Number two, I'll bring back the death penalty. You kill, you die. I will bring, I will bring conscription back. People say, well, you're going to get numbers to mass deport people. So we're going to get it numbers in conscription. Mil- military military training. Yes, military training. You know, every white man that comes from the army, the, the, you ask him, where did you learn to do this? The army, sir. Mm. Where did you learn to be such a good mechanic? The army, sir. When did you learn to cook like this? The army, sir. So it's not only military. It's also lessons, life, life lessons. Skills, life, life skills. Life skills being yeah. taught there. So I'm just saying to South Africans, it's fine. Kubeka, carry on mm. with your democracy. <laughs> Kubeka, this thing is not working. You can us. have your democracy and constitution. Yes, because this constitution is not the best constitution in the world. We are being told it's the best one. You know, this one does not even recognize God. We are a God fearing country and we don't want to admit that. Mm-hmm. Our parents are Christians and Muslims. Now, today, we want to be woke. <laughs> and ask me, yeah, why do you believe in God? Go ask your mother because you are <laughs> baptized. Ask your mother why she baptized you. We are a God-fearing country. God bless South Africa. We need to have that as our mantra. This country needs God and it needs decisive leadership. Pen, I'm one guy, I can tell you that. We'll come in here, I'll put the best people in the best jobs. I will not hire people to say you are with me uh, building the PA. No. We need to get, he must show me not how long has he been in the Patriotic Alliance. He must show me skill in electricity. He must show me skill in this. I don't want the guy that come to learn on the job. You must deploy the cadres. Yeah, everybody's learning on the job. No, I'm learning. <laughs> we don't want the guy that's learning. <laughs> now you have electricity minister that said he's learning. He's going to sign up. What are you learning? We, we are past learning. We need a guy that come and say, where's the button? Do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. Imagine my security team. Yeah. If I hire these guys to protect my life, they protect my life. If Glenn came and Glenn says, I'm learning on, the, learning job. on the job, what's this Let's now? Let's my pop. <laughs> Glenn is still learning there. Glenn was still learning there. Part two, your pop, pop, pop. Then, oh, sorry, boss, I was still learning. I didn't know. <laughs> so they take chances. Me, my people, they are not learning. They know what must happen. So I'm <laughs> saying that. Let's let skip my pop. Let's skip my pop, my bro. Now come say that I will learn, I will learn, I will learn. I can't even answer here. I come here. I must get people. Papa Tibang to rob one already. Papa Tibang for buy tang. Now we have ministers say we are still learning. This is not kindergarten. This is our life. How can you, Pen, let me tell you, how do you have load sharing and we have so much coal? How do you have load sharing and we have so much sun? How do you have load sharing and we've got so much wind? How do you have load sharing and we're down with so many? We can, we can have 
nuclear. We were told nuclear is bad. Nuclear is needed. We need everything that can switch the lights on. Because if the lights are off, everything is off. Mm. Life as we know it now. You know, people were saying that Julius Mannema was scaring people when he spoke about you have to bury your relatives same day. He was not scaring people. He was telling them a reality. Yeah. Or the, when, if, the, if the grid collapses. If the grid collapses, I've seen in Venezuela. If the grid collapses, it's Armageddon here. There's no school. There's no work. There's no transport. Yeah, the there's no communication. Yeah, there's it no is communication. darkness. Now we are being believed. People make fun of 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 of, 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 of uh, uh, Julius Malema, mm. and they say uh, two weeks is over. We are not. They take the word of people that has put us here. Mm. You know, load shedding has been with us for sixteen years. Yes, it's a sweet sixteen birthday of load yeah, shedding this 16, year. Yeah, sixteen. You're right. Now, for sixteen years, a man has not solved the problem. Then you want to listen to a man that has for sixteen years been grappling with a problem. And they say Malema is lying, the grid will not collapse. I'm not saying he's telling the truth. But in a situation where I have to believe one of the two, mm. I'd rather believe Malema than believe the guys mm. that say, no, 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 we promise you there will not be a uh, grid collapse. Mm. Bra, you've been promising us lights forever. Mm. Look what they did, they sorted themselves out. Yeah. You know where I saw we have no leadership in this country? During COVID. I saw we have no leadership in this country because during COVID, when other countries were resolutely seeking solutions, our leaders were digging graves. Mm. We need to revisit that story. Yeah. Your leadership that must keep you alive is preparing for your death. They've already accepted defeat. I am saying in this country, they're smart people, bro. And I'm not the only one. I'm not the, I'm not, I'm not the only one that can be president in this country. Mm. But I'm saying the following. There are people smarter than what I can ever hope to be. But you see, for a time like this, where we deal with mafias, mm. when, we de- when we need guts, I'm your man. I will deal with them. You made other, you spoke earlier about people who were doing those uh, 80 people that were doing the, uh, out of 60,000 people. Sure. They were waiting my last day to do it because they knew I'm not playing must the power. <laughs> I want to I want to skip some of these questions that I had for you mm. here. This one I want to skip, but I have to I have to raise it because the way you you said it when we sat down was so beautiful. Um, I wanted to ask why the Patriotic Alliance is not a colored party. You've on, you've answered this many times before, uh, but I can imagine that there probably are still a few colored people who feel that you guys may have sold out because you realize there's a bigger South Africa. Maybe one of the arguments could be, look, we, we, we're working with people that are not colored, so it doesn't make sense. But I remember when we said, you said something like, we speak about a black Walter Sisulu, but there's a, there was a, a Neville Alexander. We had Nelson Mandela in, in Robben Island, but the first prisoner was Harry de Strandloper. Uh, Steve Beagle was killed by the police, but you had Ashley Creel. Andrew Zondo was shot by the police, but you had Anton French. We speak about the June 16 massacre, but there was the Athlone massacre. Um, to this day, and it's one of the things I still speak about in pain. I, I'm not even a colored person. I identify as colored, but Patricia DeLille, maybe even people like yourself, there's still a lot of colored people that feel like they don't have leaders. And it almost feels like the PA, it came and then it quickly, just like the ANC moved from, you are our people to know we're now non-racialist. And we're for everybody. No, that's true. I think there's some people that feel we started out as a colored nationalist party. Yeah. But you know... On Spaisani. Yeah. Sense and time. Yeah. So does that. You'll go nowhere if you're just for one race. That's why apartheid ended. It's not a sustainable model. It's not sustainable. So if we want to be sustainable, we are doing no different what the ANC and the DA has done to our people. You know, colored people... And, and it's so easy just to say, yeah, colored people think they're white. It goes yeah. deeper than that. Yeah. Everybody forgets that. What you just mentioned, I can go on with that list. The first person was, when, when a party was Jim was hanging people, they hanged Frank Rivers. Yeah. Didn't say, you are colored, we can't hang you. Yeah. The first MK soldier to die in battle is Basil February, was a colored male. I'm mentioning this to you to say that we're an integral part of the struggle as colored people. 
In fact, when the church, when the exiles happened and the insults happened, the guys that went in, in inmates, Robben Island, they called them the inmates, the insults, mm. the exiles, the guys went outside. It was majority colored people in the country that kept the fires of the struggle burning. They, 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 they closed 500 schools after that. Now, we cannot sit here and say we are only for colored people. That's racist. I was racist at the time when I said that. But I've grown up. And, 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 and when you found God, you can't just say you are for one people. Mm. You might be for all God's people. There are colored people that say, no, we must only fight. You know, people say colored people think they're white. They forget that colored people voted for a black government in the Western Cape mm. in 1994. In 1994, the what, ANC ran the Western Cape. What is the br most brilliant thing? When I saw the apartheid regime at Foresight, they advised Nelson Mandela and the ANC. They said to them immediately after 1994, when they saw the result of Cape Town, mm. they said to them, no, but black people suffered. Colored people suffered, but black people suffered the most. Mm. And Mandela and them ate that with the hook, line, and sinker. Mm. And it's true, black people suffered more than colored people, in my opinion. They didn't have toilets. We all we had flushing toilets. They didn't have tar roads. While well, we had tar roads, but it was it was a different kind of slave. Yeah. But we were all slaves at the, at the end of the day. Yeah. And Mandela and them believed that, and then they came and saying black people, colored people cannot be African. Mm. We can only be black, but we cannot be African. Now that is what the part that you managed to get right yeah. and put in the heads. Now in 20 years down the line, these people will move away from the blacks and come back to our fault. Mm. And that's exactly what happened. And then a Gaten McKenzie stepped in and says, no, 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 there's another alternative. Mm. You voted for the white man in 1948, and we've got nothing to show for it. Yeah. We voted for the black man in 1994. Mm. We've got nothing to show for it. It's time that we vote for ourselves. Sure. And we are the fastest growing party. And there's a by-election tonight, and I don't know the result, but I know we're going to beat the DA, mm. which has the majority of black in Kokama. I don't know the result yet. Yeah. The election is happening today. Yeah. But I know we're going to beat the DA because colored people, have, the dead has arisen politically. Mm. Well, what we are trying to do is to say, let's have one nation. It's very difficult for me. My mother is black mm. to oppress black people. Mm. So colored people have a mixture of everybody. When we're a bit crazy sometimes, it's the racist <laughs> fighting inside. <laughs> I tell you, David Cow, no, sometimes we're crazy, it's the racist. There's a struggle inside. There's a struggle inside because that's who we are. Some, some colored people love burning food, hot chili. Sure. It's the Indian part that, sure. that's, that is. But we are the best place people to bring South Africa together. Mm. If we don't bring South Africa together, Penn, we have no country. Yeah. If you go only for white people, you're wasting your time. If you're only for black people, you're wasting your time. You know, if you look at, I can tell you horror stories that's been done to colored communities. But when we mention this, they say, uh, you see, there it goes again, colored, colored, colored. Yeah. All we wanted to do, and I think we've succeeded, was to bring the colored agenda on the table. That's all we wanted to do. When we sat down, you said the ANC will go under 40%. In yes. 2024, and you even gave a specific number. You said 37%. This yes. was last year in August, August 2022. Do you still feel the same? And uh, based on just today, uh, how do you see the elections working out in 2024? And maybe this becomes the chance to talk about coalition politics. The ANC is going to, uh, if they get load shedding right, they're going to go to 41. That's now if they fix load shedding. Or pretend to just close to elections. People are not as foolish anymore. People okay. wonder. Okay. You know, 10 years ago, if you spoke bad about the ANC, we were looking at you type of like, what type of black is this? Mm. Today, when you speak good about the ANC, people are like, what type of a black is this? <laughs> and that's a big mind shift. There's a joke I see on Facebook and on Twitter where one lady said, if you don't send me lunch money, I'm going to vote ANC. <laughs> and people go like, ah, give your account, give your account. Now, if I was in the ruling party, yeah, I've taken that serious. Sure. I've taken that serious. You'd have taken the last local election serious. Yes. I can say to you there's going to be a coalition government. In how in Joburg, city of Joburg, look at what's happening in the city of Joburg. It's going to happen, what's going to happen next year. Yeah, but that stuff is a mess. It's not a mess. We are the learning. coalition, yeah, yeah. Coalition. It's still we are new it's still in coalition. New. Now new. we want to go to... But it's a mess. You want to go new. to school and already be the top student, yeah. but you are grade one. Yeah. I'm saying we are new in coalitions. Yeah. We are a resolute nation. We are a smart nation. We will get it right. Okay. Some of us are willing to learn from other nations that got it right, like Israel, like Sweden. We are willing to learn from them. 
So we're going to get it right. The people are saying it's a mess because they want the DA on top. Now, if the DA is not on top, it's a mess. Mm. And the DA is the delinquent of coalitions. <laughs> Wherever the DA is, they are the Nyaupe <laughs> part of the family. Every, not every house, but houses with Nyaupe, Eddie, they love him, but they know when the thing is gone, it's him. So the DA has not learned how to be a good friend in coalition. Mm. Don't worry about the fight they have with the PA. Look at the fight with Action SA. Look at the fight with Freedom Front Plus. Mm. Don't, we are the mortal enemies. Mm. And they are our mortal enemies. Mm. But look at the people that vote with them. Yeah. Action SA. Now people say PA is keeping the Al Jamaa boys as mayor. Mm. Action SA voted with the DA in Swani. When the time came, when we had to vote for Funzi, mm. the DA refused to vote for Funzi. That so was the, Action SA in Joburg? Yes. Yeah. This is, I'm talking about a month, two months ago. Action SA leader for Joburg. Um, yeah, yeah. They voted mm. for Funzi. Yeah. For, for, for the DA mayor, Salius Brunk. Action SA voted for that mayor. When the time came two months after that for the DA to vote for Funzi, they refused. Mm. So what you see in the city of Joburg, fools, they blame me. It's very easy to always blame the black guy mm. in the room or the darker skin guy in the room. Mm. Why didn't the DA not vote for Funzi? Because the DA wants power at all costs. And if they are not the captain of the ship, mm. they sink their ship like they sink the city of Joburg. We hear how the DA knows how to govern. We have the 10 billion that the Auditor General, not Mackenzie, saying in Swanee. Where the 10 billion is missing, according to the Auditor General. They would have been there until two, from 2006 to 2016 to now. Where the 10 billion? That's not me saying that. You can read up on that stuff. Mm. All I'm saying to you is that coalitions is very difficult. Yeah. And we are all learning. And I think we are not doing as bad for newcomers to this coalition thing. Mm. And we're going to get it right next year. It will be better come 2024. Because we have learned... And we are still going to learn. Mm. And the ones that don't learn, they'll continue to make the same mistakes. I want to give a special shout out to Eugene Poeta. Uh, very intelligent, very charming, very open-minded gentleman. Uh, I'm very honored to have met him. Um, I think in the interest of time, I'm hoping that you will come and visit us again soon. Uh, I'm trying to shut this down before your favorite load shedding comes and kicks <laughs> us out. But uh, Mr. Gaten McKenzie, I want to thank you so much for coming through to visit. And I, I really, really hope we can sit down again soon, speak politics, speak your vision for this country and finding solutions and igniting the fire in ordinary South Africans that have kind of lost hope. Now, first, I want to thank you also yeah. for allowing me to speak and to ventilate some of the issues and to answer questions that I never get mainstream media giving me an opportunity to to speak about. Yeah. And I want to say thank you to you for that. And then I want to just say to people that, you know what, we live in a beautiful country. Mm. We live in a wealthy country. We are going to get this country right. We're going to fix South Africa. We're going to fix South Africa. We're going to get the right mix of people. It might not be us, but this country's got not only minerals, mm. it's endowed with the finest minds. Yeah. In, and that mind is no color. Mm. We have decided we're going to be a rainbow nation. I've not gotten another memo. And until that memo is standing, mm. I will fight for the inclusion of all races. Thank you very much. Thanks, G. Salute.